that's quite an introduction. <laughs> so, um, I have notes because I don't speak very often. So it's, it's kind of like nerve wracking, even though some people might think this is a small group of people. To me, it's like a stadium right now and it's pretty hectic. <laughs> so yeah, my name is uh, Clayton Barker. Um, like James said, known each other for super long now and uh, been in the UAE going on eight years. I'm rounding up, as Randa said, because everyone should round up. So it's almost eight years, eight years in August I've only been here um, and been doing quite a lot of stuff. So basically, it's going to be a talk about water essentially. It's what I do. It is my passion. Um, and then I will kind of, I kind of go off track and then I'll come back on track. So the way I talk is very all over the show. That's why I'm trying to keep myself limited to specific topics just so I don't go way off my track. So I'll just go to the next thing. So water, what is water? Um, this isn't going to be a science lesson on you know, hydrogen and oxygen and which has two parts and which doesn't. It's basically just going to be a collaboration of ideas based on the water aspect. So, I'll just read through it quickly. Water covers about 70% of the planet. Uh, we need it to live. It is one of the most powerful natural agents and changes the very earth, uh, very nature of Earth's surface. Uh, water is life. Water takes life. Um, it has nearly taken mine, and I'll be getting into that a little bit later on. Uh, water is strong. And the cool thing, we're all made out of water. We're essentially 60% water. So we can draw a lot of similarities on how water affects the Earth. We can do the exact same thing. Right? Um, and then, yeah, we're basically going to my story of water and a little bit of life stuff. Um, so my backstory. So who here, a show of hands, is still a student? Okay. Student of life? Well, a uh, student of a university. <laughs> um, cool. So who, one person, what are you studying? Multimedia design. Multimedia design, all right. Sounds a little more fancy than what I'm used to. Okay, so multimedia design. I study photography. Right? I left high school and I was like, I'm going to become the next greatest thing. I'm going to study photography. I've never done it. I've never done photography. I studied it for three years of my life, walked out. And this isn't to demotivate you in what you're studying, but just for those people that don't really know 100%, it is a situation where you might potentially get into a career that you know nothing about but it's how we deal with it and how we learn moving forward. So basically what that is, and you guys will know, studying and even the people that are part of the school of life, every day is a bit of a challenge, right? Every day there's some new drama, whether it's the bosses you work with, the circle of friends that you hang out with, there's always something new happening. So you kind of need to have this mental fortitude and strength to go through life every day, knowing that, okay, today I could have a fight with my best friend, I could have an argument with my mom, all of these things are day-to-day -day struggles. They're small in the great scheme of things, but it's still a struggle nonetheless to certain people. So I'll kind of get into a little bit more of a personal side. Um, Kat, who uh, James had mentioned, she helped me kind of through figuring out the speech and how everything was going to go. And she did this really interesting task with me. She asked me to go back as far as I could in my memory so as young as I can remember, my very first memory of seeing something that had strength or determination, like a little bit of fortitude. So I, it took me, she kind of put me on the spot because I was on the phone and it was my credit. And I was like, oh, I'm running out of credit and I need to think back. Okay, so the memory I came up with, it's very personal. I haven't told a lot of people about it. Um, I was four years old and I watched my mom get thrown off a balcony by my biological dad. So she broke her hip, she broke her pelvis, but she was in hospital for three months. So all of that, as a four-year-old kid, I mean, who here really has a memory, like a solid memory from when you were four? You know, I was four, so that's like burned into your head. So I remember just getting told, go and hide. So my sister and I, we ran under the bed and we hid. And then three months later, I saw my mom again after she came out of hospital. Where the strength comes from is she basically got back into the house after leaving the hospital, packed up everything and we left. Okay, so it's that strength that that's my very first memory of somebody who's willing to go, all right, this is not working, this is not right, and we left. And so my biggest form of strength came from my mom in a sense that she showed me that 
even in a situation where you've got kids and you're married and all this stuff, you need to be able to thank you. <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's from my mom. So she'll probably see the video and she's definitely going to cry. Yeah. So there's always that. <laughs> so I'll just go to the, the next slide. So my backstory, like I, like I mentioned, I studied photography for three years. Left high school, I'm like, oh, I'm the greatest photographer ever. This is still back in the day when we used film camera, by the way, so I might be showing my age a little bit. So I learned on, it wasn't digital, it was all film, so learning how to do exposures and all of that stuff correctly. Um, left high school, started the sport of flowboarding, which uh, James had mentioned, got his, his boys involved in. And within a couple of years, I'd won my first uh, world title. So I won a world title, competed overseas, and, and got that. A couple of months after winning my world title, I actually broke my back. So I had a terrible fall, um, landed from about 15 feet sitting, and basically compressed. Three vertebra fractured, two discs completely herniated, and basically what ended up happening was where the disc had kind of moved out, it was putting pressure on my spinal cord, and I was paralyzed from the waist down. So it wasn't very long, but because obviously everything was really swollen, put yourself in a position, you just had a fall. I fall a lot. I fall pretty much every day. I'll probably have a fall. And imagine you kind of sit up and you're like, okay. First thing I do when I fall is I always move my extremities. I'm always like, okay, everything's fine. Imagine standing up or sitting up, sorry, and telling yourself, move your toes and you can't. Okay. And I was 19. So it's one of those situations where you're 19 years old, got so much life ahead, and then I'm like, I don't have my legs. So panic sets in. I legitimately cried for like two days. I was like, on the third day, I was like, you know, it's kind of cool. I can wheelie around in a wheelchair. <laughs> I've got all of these things started kind of going through my mind. But then what ended up happening is, you know, if you've been sitting down for too long, especially if you're cross-legged, you get pins and needles in your legs. Now imagine not feeling your legs for three days. The pins and needles that you get is like, imagine your, sometimes it gets painful, right? Imagine the most painful pins and needles constantly, every single day for a week, where you just slowly starting to get feeling back to your extremities and all of that stuff. Now, it sucks in hindsight because it was painful, but at the time I was like, I can feel my legs, right? So you kind of get this motivation to then move forward. Skipping forward a couple of months, I was in back traction, kind of had to go through physical therapy, learn how to walk again. This whole process took about three months to from, from the accident to gaining feeling to then being able to walk again. And then after that, I won another two world titles because I was like, I'm not done, I've fallen, I need to get back up, make it work. And then I won another two world titles after that. So that was quite cool. That's my little, my little backstory. So even with the broken back, Okay, it wasn't as extreme as some people's, but the mindset is still there where you can either choose to retreat and do nothing, or you can choose to be like, all right, well, wheelchair is going to be fun. I never have to ask anybody for a seat. All of this stuff, right? Because you always got everything covered. So that was all of the stuff that was going through my head at the time as well. Uh, I feel like I'm rambling. All right, next thing. So now we're going to go into my, the sports that I do. Okay, why James asked me to come through, what I won world titles in, what other sports I do, that's all related to water. So, um, I'm just gonna show a board quickly. I was gonna bring all of my boards, but I have like 12, and they get really heavy, so I brought the lightest one. <laughs> um, so this is essentially just, it's a wake surfboard. So I don't know if anybody's tried wake boarding or wake surfing before. Highly, highly recommended, it. it's a lot of fun. Ladies, if you're very conservative, I know a lot of places that are ladies only, um, where it'll be in a little cove, there's nobody else around, there's female instructors and female boat drivers. So everything is female, it's kind of like a ladies' night <laughs> behind the boat, which is quite cool. So um, this is essentially one of the boards that I use. I do a multitude of different board sports. Um, after I broke my back, I basically said to myself, I will try everything if it involves a board. Because, and I found that this hurts the least, by the way, so this is kind of why I've stuck to it a little bit more. 
Um, so that's basically the sport of snowboarding. That's what I've won my three world titles in. Um, that video is pretty old. Um, a lot of things have changed since that video. Um, but that wave is actually the wave that I broke my back on. And that was a couple of years after I broke my back. So it was just good to get back onto it and kind of be like, all right, it hurt me, but I'm good. We can get back up. Um, I always like to go through life. I mean, I'm pretty sure everybody's heard this saying that it's not how many times you fall, it's about how many times you actually get back up. So you all fall, but what are you doing? Are you, are you doing what you need to do to kind of be that strong individual to actually make a difference in whatever you're doing? So it is pretty tough, but show me something in life that isn't difficult and I'll probably call you a liar. Because <laughs> it's always difficult at some point. Um, I'm going to touch on surfing a little bit. So surfing is something I started doing. So that's properly in the ocean. I started surfing when I was 12. So that's 23 years ago. It's a long time. Um, so I've been surfing in the ocean for 23 years. And the best thing about surfing in the ocean, and I'm pretty sure some of you guys will agree that even if you could just go down to the beach and you sit on the beach and it's nice and quiet, you're watching the sunset, it's one of the most peaceful places you'll ever be. Um, the UAE is a bit difficult because every beach is really difficult, is busy. So finding that quiet spot, but now being out in the ocean is one of the best things in the world because essentially it's you, it's nature, it's peace. If you want quiet, you can just paddle away to somewhere else and just have all these thoughts in your head and kind of just sort out your life, which is really cool. But the difficulties with surfing is it is a constantly changing environment. The weather changes every day, so you got weather issues that could, you know, change the surf to be a little bit more violent. You have marine life that wants to probably hurt you at some point. So, I mean, you got sharks, you got all of these other things. And I'm from South Africa, so the sharks that we have are <laughs> really, really big. Um, so you kind of just get used to seeing that stuff in the water. And if it's your time, it's your time kind of situation. Which is, just don't look underwater is essentially what I mean. That's why I don't scoop it out. Because I, I know what's down there, I don't need to see it. Um, and you know, you've also got these other things like terrain, there's rocks, there's reefs, there's a lot of things that can actually injure you. Um, you wouldn't think it relatively deep water, I've dislocated my shoulder a few times surfing just by hitting a rock or a reef or something like that. So it, it has the potential to uh, be a little bit more dangerous than you expect. I've been surfing for 23 years and I will never surf that way. 100% I'll never ever surf that way. It is, it's mind blowing. I went and I watched it. It wasn't that big when I watched it and it was still, I was legitimately on the rocks to maybe the back line of chairs. That's where the surfers were. And I'm on a cliff watching the guys over there surfing towards me. It's the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life. But that mental determination that those guys have, knowing that, I mean, you saw a couple of the falls. It's, it's crazy and it hurts. I mean, you're going probably, you know, at top speed on a surfboard, you're probably doing about 30, 35 kilometers now, especially on the bigger waves like that. If you hit anything, even if it's water, it's going to hurt. You don't go, it's not like diving into a swimming pool, you know, it's kind of, you bounce around and get thrown around. So it's pretty, pretty violent. Um, so, I mean, just talking about mental strength and mental fortitude, those guys, and they just sit out there, they're giggling and they're laughing and you can hear their conversations. Be talking about um, after this, I'm gonna go get a sandwich. Like, I'd be worried about dying, <laughs> like holding my breath, and they're talking about what sandwich they're gonna eat next, right? So it's it's just that mental strength that some people have that enables them to live in a situation like that. But we all have that same mental strength, right? So I'm gonna kind of throw it back to you a little bit. In your mind, I'm not gonna if you don't want to, don't have to, but in your mind. Think back as young as you can, that same experiment that Kat made me do. Think back as young as you can, where you remember either yourself or somebody else that showed determination or that mental fortitude or that strength to get through a difficult situation. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. Just think about it in your head, kind of relive it if you can. Um, it's pretty difficult, right? Yeah. So I'll give you, I'll give you a couple of seconds, just think back. And then if you if you've got something, just put your hand up. Is 
It's difficult, yeah? <laughs> okay, so that's your youngest age. Let's go midlife. So, well, I mean, midlife for me is probably like still early for some people, but let's say anything between 15 and 20 years old. Think about something where you saw somebody or you yourself had a situation where when you look back and you're like, actually, no, I was pretty strong in that situation. I dealt with it really well. It's a bit easier at 15, 20, because it's more recent, I guess. Yeah, everybody kind of got something in mind? Yeah? Okay, now, recently. It could have been yesterday, it could have been last month, last week, whatever it may be. Something as well. Anything where you, you yourself, showed a little bit of strength, to either say no to something that you normally don't, or somebody else around you show strength. Have you got something? <laughs> it's tough. Now imagine being on a phone call where you're using your credit. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> That's difficult. Right? So, but everybody kind of thought about something. I bet most of you had certain or multiple situations going through your head. You're like, is this strong enough? Can I say this? Or, and you went through a few situations, right? Either yourself, maybe a best friend, something like that. We all have that innate ability in us to get through a certain situation. And that's the same thing as saying we're 60% water. Water erodes the earth. We stand on the earth every day and water still has the ability to break it down. Right? So we have that natural strength to maybe not break down earth to some degree, but we have that ability to shape and reform our world that we live in, the things that affect us most. Um, I don't know if anybody here has done a, a course on uh, the seven habits of highly effective people. Yeah. The book. So you read the book? Yeah. yeah. It's a great book. There's some things in there that are kind of being flawed by certain teachings that have come since. But the one main fundamental part that I took away from it is the circles of influence. It's things that you can actually do. So can you change the situation you're in? So you have... Somebody you don't know is talking bad about you on Instagram. We all have trolls that talk and say things or bad comments or anything. Can you change that person's perspective? No, really? So it's, it's out of your control. That person's going to be that person regardless. But what you do have the ability is to give him or her the opportunity to say those things. So you can block, you can delete, you can do all that type of stuff. That's just a small... Uh, 20, 21st century explanation but essentially if you are in a situation either you're studying something that you're being forced to and you don't really enjoy it or you're working in a place that you don't really enjoy what are you doing are you going to stay there and just be miserable every single day and every single day you're going to sit at your computer and go i don't know why i come to work every day this is frustrating okay what are you actually doing to change that situation okay the thing i like to tell all of my colleagues the worst anybody can ever say to you is no. Is that so bad? It's not a bad word. It's not like, you know, they, they kind of, they're not firing you. They're just saying no. Okay, so what are you going to do to change that situation? I went on a way, I went on a way tangent. That's on the next piece of paper. <laughs> I just realized that because I was like, sharks. Oh, we missed that part. Um, <laughs> okay, so we'll... I'm going to go back into talking about marine life and things that can kill you, essentially. So I showed you the rocks. Um, the next spot that I'm going to show you is, it's a surfing competition. It happened a few years ago. It's an Australian surfer by the name of Rick Fanning. The first, that's the first recorded, it, it's, it's gone on to, it's not really a shark attack. What, after they kind of looked through everything, what ended up happening is the shark was swimming underneath them. And that spot's called Jeffrey's Bay. And it's relatively dirty. It's, it's brown water, so it's there's a lot of sand moving and stuff like that, and the reef is brown. So you don't really see what's underneath you, especially if it's a great white shark. They camouflage so well. Basically, what happened is it swam underneath them and got caught in his leash. So the thing that attached, attaches him to the surfboard, and once the shark felt like it was trapped, that's when it thrashed. So even if you look at the leash afterwards, there's... Because has anybody felt a shark? <laughs> One direction it's smooth and you go in the opposite direction, it feels like sandpaper. It's really, really rough. Um, so obviously with the thrashing, it tore through the, the leg rope and 
he actually ended up getting away. So if the shark wanted to attack him, it's a different story because he, he would have never seen it coming and then I definitely wouldn't have shown you that video. But I knew, <laughs> I knew that this was going to be a little bit more of a shock factor because you see the shark and then you don't see what's happening. So it's like, oh, is he okay? Okay, but everything was fine. So um, these are setbacks, right? Um, there's a good documentary, it's a 60 minute show that CNN did with him. And I think it was the very next day, he went out to the exact same spot because he knew if he didn't go back out and surf it or face that situation again, he's never gonna get back into the water. Because you go through something like that, even if it wasn't a real attack, that's still gonna probably mess with your head for quite some time, right? So he went back in and he said it was the best therapy he could have done was actually getting back into the water and facing that situation. Um, last slide, and I've gone through half of it already. <laughs> <coughs> cool, so physical experience. So, I'm going to kind of talk about the different things that we do on the board. So, every board sport that we end up doing is very different in one way or another. So, we have, so the board sports that I do, there's wake surfing, wake boarding, wake skating, snowboarding, flowboarding, surfing. I'll stop there. So it's about six board sports that I do. And every single one is completely different to the next. There are similarities, but none of them are the same. So you can kind of put it into a perspective of life situations. There'll be similarities and you've done or dealt with certain things before that are similar, but it's not the exact same situation. So things will change. So to give you an example, when wake surfing, I basically want to be leaning all of my weight forward. So while I'm going to be riding, I'm going to be standing more on my front leg. So that's kind of leaning into the wave to get the, the board going. For flowboarding, I'm leaning all my weight or 80% of my weight onto my back leg. So it's that transition of thinking that becomes a little bit more difficult. When I'm wake skating, um, Neutral, I'm right in the middle, I'm between both, and I'm kind of shifting my weight back and forth. Uh, when I'm surfing, same thing, you're leaning forward predominantly most of the time, but you do end up having to lean back quite a few times. So the, the way I kind of relate that to life, essentially, is you're always going to be leaning into or leaning away from trouble, right? Whether it's drama at work, drama with whatever personal situations you have in your life, you're always leaning into trouble in some way or another. The more you lean forward on this board, if you lean too far forward, you're gonna fall. Same with flowboarding. If I lean on the, on the back foot and I'm doing it well, I'm gonna be in one spot. But if I lean too far back, I'm gonna fall. So it's finding that fine line of leaning into that trouble and then seeing what you're gonna get out of it. Have I leaned too far and I've fallen? Or have I leaned just enough that I'm kind of just doing it perfectly. And that's it, the way I kind of see life related to the way board sports have helped me get through certain situations. I'll get into a certain situation and I don't automatically think, oh, if I was surfing, what would I do? But the way I look at it is, am I leaning enough into the situation? Am I putting enough effort into this situation to get the rewards I want? Am I kind of just going easy, happy-go-lucky, going to just get what's given to me? Or am I going out to get it? Because again, remember, the worst thing anybody can say is no. So I'm leaning into the situation. I want to get something. Somebody says, no, you can't do it. All right, I'm going to lean back. Maybe try a different route, try a different sport sport. And am I going to get something that way? So are you happy just in the middle? Or do you want to lean into a little bit of the situation to see what the maximum you can get out of it without falling. Okay, we all fall, we all fail. Then we fall and we fail and we fall and we fail. We do it every single day, pretty much for the rest of our lives. But have you achieved anything out of it? Have you learned? Even if it's a small little something, you've fallen and you're like, oh, I know not to do that again, right? It's everything is a learning experience. Everything you need to do daily is a takeaway. It's when I first saw it, I was like, yes, no. I'm going to go skydiving. <laughs> Have I gone skydiving yet? No. No. Because I don't see the point of jumping out of an airplane that's going to land exactly where you're going. You're going to jump out of the plane and go, and it's there. So, did you skydive? 
Yes. And how was it? It was surprisingly because I was with my dad and you know, la la la. It was, it was quick, it was really quick. But the worst, like the funniest part was when we were on an airplane going up. Yeah. It felt like a war. <laughs> like 14 people sitting next to oh. each other, loud. Oh, yeah. You know, and they're just looking at each other. Nobody's, you know, you feel yeah. like you're going to war or something. <laughs> the feeling was really intense. Yeah. I don't need that drama in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I've got, got enough drama in my life. But what he says is very true. If you never go out and you never try to get something you want, whether it's the degree that you want, or you're going to study further and you're going to get your master's or whatever it may be, if you don't push yourself, you're never going to get there. There's the quote that you guys posted the other day that if, what are you doing to achieve your dreams? Nobody's going to give you your dreams. You need to go out and take it, right? Nobody's going to, maybe some people are, you know, a little bit more fortunate and they have the ability to kind of get into a family run business or whatever it may be, but is it that person's passion? And maybe their parents just want them in that business. What are you doing to make your dreams a reality? And I love that video just because he's, he's so right in saying that the best things are on the other side of fear. If you're afraid to ask for that promotion, if you're afraid to ask for that raise, just go and ask. Again, the worst anybody can say is no. Right? And it's not going to affect your life in the slightest. You just need to be able to say to yourself, all right, what do I need to do better or what do I need to change? And you just need to get that done. Um, I think it's I covered almost everything in the last one, damn it. Um, yeah, so the very next, it's the last slide, and then I'm going to end on one little saying, um, or last video. Does anybody know a guy by the name of David Goggins? I highly recommend you to either watch some of his podcasts, or he's got a book that's just recently come out as well. Um, he's a little bit abrasive. So he's an American guy, used to be really, really overweight, and I use this as my motivational tool. Um, 10 months ago, I was 105 kilos, way overweight, terrible lifestyle, blood pressure was through the roof, my sugar was through the roof. I was really unhealthy. I went through a very depressive stage and it took me years to kind of get out of it. But one day I was watching this and I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm to blame. I'm the one that's kind of to blame for it. Today, 10 months later, I'm 90 kilos. So I've lost 15 kilos in 10 months. And that just came down to really hard work and just changing my lifestyle. Me deciding this is what I need to do and going through the physical pain of actually getting it done and sticking to it um, was basically because of this guy. He was a very similar situation when he was younger. Uh, he was super overweight, always unhealthy. And if you look at him now, he's like one of the fittest guys. He actually became a US Marine, which is one of the hardest courses to get into. He, I think he tried three times and he failed three times to get into Marines and he pushed for a fourth time. And then he managed to get into doing that. Afterwards, he was like, the only thing that was holding him back was his own mind. Um, he has a, a, a part in here where it says, humans are only really reaching 40% of our capacity. I know there's all these numbers that we only use 5% of our brain power and all that stuff, but our mind controls probably 70% of what we do. The 40% we are like, yes, I'm doing my utmost. I'm doing the best I can do, but you still have more. So he refers to it very similarly to um, in a car, there's in the computer system, there's a thing called a governor, which basically gets programmed by the factory. So the factory will say, the speedometer will say 300 kilometers an hour, but your car will never get to 300 kilometers an hour. It'll maybe stop at 220. Okay. So there's still that small percentage that your car wants to do but the computer's saying, no, no, you've had enough, right? So he kind of relays that into a human mindset where we start feeling pain, especially when it comes to training or weight loss or anything like that. We get to a point where you're like, I'm dying. Your brain goes into that fight or flight mode and says, you've had enough, you need to sit down. But you still have more power left to do it. And this, this video really kind of motivated me. So that's pretty cool. That's uh, yeah, motivated. I know it's... When you watch the actual video, like this, I don't know, I just I get so excited. I'm like, oh, I'm going to do something. And then just go out and do it, which is, which is a lot of fun. So I highly recommend, if you don't like the language and all of that stuff, then, you know, there are a lot of other podcasts and, and things like that that are very motivational. But the David Goggin stuff especially really struck home because 
he had a really rough upbringing. He was overweight. And then that part at the end where it says there was somebody that started with no legs and then they overtaking people that actually have. So that kind of like resonated with me a little bit. So I really followed this guy quite a lot. So in ending, um, you know, I just want you guys to take away the fact that we are strong. You guys are all strong. Everybody has that innate ability in them to be stronger than they really feel. Think about what David Goggins said where he says we all have that governor. Get to where you feel uncomfortable and then just do a little bit more. Every single time. And it's that repetition that will eventually get you to where you need to be. So we are strong and we are made of water. And that is it. Thank you so much. Guys.